we have been discussing time response and uh, we looked at first order systems last class the response itself or system response will have transient phase and steady state phase okay we also we can also call this transient response and steady state response and what it what it uh, means is fairly simple you have hmm? what do you, what do you understand by transient the meaning transient something transitioning right so if you have if this is your input this is your input signal okay your response ultimately you want this response to be tracking this input right or following the input it cannot um, there is a certain finite time it's going to take to get close to that input or track that input so from that point onwards we generally say you can define this so if this is within 2% or 5% it depends on what kind of system you are dealing with of the required input the first time it gets there and continues to be there from that point or from the initial phase to this point this is your transient response mm -hmm. what's up sami every system will have a transient phase and a steady state phase okay and as a control engineer you will be required to design your control system to achieve certain performance for the transient phase and certain performance for the steady state phase see if you are talking about a jet aircraft or a fighter aircraft this response is really important <coughs> you realize that right it has to get to where it needs to go at a really fast rate so this these characteristics are much more important for a commercial aircraft or for a uh, passenger aircraft these are not so relevant as this one so you can take a little more time reaching to a steady state right so that is you can think about these and these and those contexts okay so what we have been discussing are these characteristics mostly we defined time constant last time okay time constant is just the so if you have a system like this for a system for a system response c of s 
equal to a into s s plus a a equal to one of t one over t is the time constant. Okay, this time constant just means that just tells you how fast the system is going to respond. Okay, so you, you can also look at this in the in the context of context of a pole pole zero plot. So think about this. If you have this will be your pole zero plot. This is sigma and this is j omega, and your a, a will be somewhere here, right? The farther this a is, the system is going to respond. that much faster okay so for example for this one if this is a1 and this is a2 a1 is greater than a2 or T1 is smaller than T2. Okay? So the farther this is, the system is going to respond much, the transient response is going to be much faster. Alright? Huh? Right. The bigger, the bigger the A value, how much more negative it is, it's going to respond that much faster. The time constant T will be that much smaller. Hmm? Right. So this T is, 1 over T is, this is the time constant. So this T will be much, much smaller as A becomes bigger and bigger. So if you want a really uh, a first order system which will respond very quickly, you'll design, you'll uh, ensure that this A is really farther off. Okay? The faster the transient response, the bigger the A is, the smaller value this T will be. Okay? The other, um, there's something called rise time. Okay? And this is defined as the time taken go from point 0.1 to point 0.9 of the final value. So TR uh, is equal to point. Think about what is this rise time. Rise time is essentially um, will tell you how fast the system is going to respond. In the sense, if you want to put a performance characteristics, you talk about uh, vehicles going from zero to sixty in certain time, right? So this is that that time, that characteristics. If you want to specify something, you could specify something like this. Okay. And this corresponds to point one. So if, if this is your um, final value, how do you define the C, R C, C T is, this is, think about this as um, one, we arrived at this, right? 
1 minus e to the power of minus a t. Okay. So the time taken to, if this is point 1, the corresponding time will be this. And if this is point 9, the corresponding value will be this. And if you just um, subtract these two, you're going to get the time taken to respond or rise from point 1 to point 9 of the final value. You can do this on your own. This is fairly simple, okay? Not, not a big deal at all. And then there is a, the final one for this thing is you have settling time. Settling time is time taken to reach and stay within 2% of the final value. When I say final final value, we are talking about final response. Okay. It is denoted by T S and it's given by four over A. Okay. This is all you need to know about first order systems and this is all that will be asked about first order systems. First order systems you have to remember this um, the response the the plot for the response and how it looks okay. First order systems will always look like this they will never go above and come down which will which may be the case for um, second order systems you'll see that okay so for for example if you are if you're trying to reach a speed of whatever 70 miles per hour per hour or 80 miles per hour a first order system can never overshoot that it will always the response will always be less than that okay Only a second order system can go to 80 and come back to 70. Second order, second or higher order. So now we start discussing um, time response of second order system. Yes. If you def if you um, model the system, you'll know it's. If you if you do the so what? How do you define? How does a first order system define? If, if the input output relationship is a first order differential equation, it's a first order system. And for, in, with regards to transfer function, it is the, the system transfer function. This is a response. The system transfer function will be, will have a first order polynomial in the denominator. Second order system may behave like this sometimes, but a first order system will not behave like a second order system. Okay. So time response of second order systems. Uh, to get started, again, what is a second order system? A second order system is just simply a system who has uh, whose input output relationship is defined by a second order differential equation. 
So if you were to represent the second order system uh, in the form of a transfer function, This is how your how you would represent a second order system. Okay. So if you see here, the denominator, the emphasis is, is that the denominator is a second order polynomial. Okay. And the types of second order systems now. Based on the roots of the second order, polyno second order polynomial, there are four types of second order system. Okay, so type one, where um, roots are real and distinct. It's a over damped system. Right. Type two roots are real and Complex. See, under damped system. Type three. Roots are. imaginary it's a undamped system so you have to be careful with these two this is a underdamped this is a undamped system okay so i'll i'll we'll discuss very in detail what these mean There is an over damped, there is under damped, and then roots are real and repeated. This is a critically damped. So we'll do these, we'll take a look at these using MATLAB.
All right, the computer upstairs is not running, so let me just quickly go and switch it on and turn. 